Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, I bring you one rather rare and definitely a very unique treat, especially in the United States. A detailed, in-depth look at this highly modified and iconic 1997 Nissan Skyline GTR V-Spec. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Skyline. We'll start up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, talking about all the extensive modifications, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior, as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big shout out and special thanks to Auto Source Dallas, located in Addison, Texas, for allowing me the opportunity to come down and film this extremely rare and beautiful 1997 Nissan Skyline GTR V Spec. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let her run. Another cool thing about the GTR, like other select JDM sports cars of the era, when you purchase the vehicle also came standard with a bespoke titanium key. The Skyline GTR was primarily offered only as a two-door and only in right-hand drive configuration as they were never sold in the United States. Of course, the GTR also represented the top echelon of performance and sport within the Skyline lineup. While this example has been highly modified, I'll present the video as if the car was stock, while highlighting key differences. For a full list of modifications, please see the description box below. legendary sound. This GTR features power assist, rack and pinion steering combined with the innovative Super High Cast four wheel steering system and an innovative electronically controlled full time all wheel drive system with active limited slip rear differential. Finished off with a four spoke leather wrapped steering wheel with grip bolsters side to side. As far as the gearbox, the GTR came only as a close ratio 5 speed manual, while more common Skylines could also be had in automatics depending on the trim level. V-Spec models also featured a four-wheel independent channel analog braking system. All fed through a Nismo or Nissan Motorsports leather-wrapped shift knob and shift boot with a matching leather-wrapped e-brake. So, let's go ahead and flip on the headlamps, as well as the hazards. Driver's side window is standard, fully automatic. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? The Nissan Skyline GTR, or Gran Turismo Racer, is a performance-oriented race-bred counterpart of the iconic Skyline nameplate. 
The original GTR first made its initial market debut in 1969 and represented a legend in Japanese and international motorsports with an illustrious racing pedigree before the GTR was retired in 1973. Available only in Japan and select export markets, the GTR was Nissan's flagship of performance, technology, and innovation. Its potent performance and top shelf engineering led it to often being compared to higher priced exotics and the best grand tours from Europe. When Nissan decided to introduce an all-new third-generation GTR in 1989, 16 years after discontinuation of the second gen, and now would be based on the eighth generation Skyline, it would set the stage for one of the best performing GT cars of the 90s, with two additional generations to follow before ending production in 2002. In fact, one of its claims to fame was winning all 29 races of the 1990 Japanese Touring Car Championship, among many others. The Skyline was available in both two- and four-door configurations, while the GTR could only be had as a two-door as I touched on earlier, but aside from some very rare four-door special editions in the mid-90s. The GTR also received the largest displacing engine of the Skyline's new RB series inline six cylinders and featured twin parallel turbochargers. More common and smaller displacement engines filled the rest of the third gen or R32's lineup, including the 2 liter RB20 Skyline GTS and its turbo variants, as well as more economical versions. The GTR's 2.6 liter RB26 packed the biggest punch and at one point was unbeatable in the race circuit, earning the R32 the famous Godzilla nickname. While never offered for sale in North America, the Skyline fits right into the 90s JDM sports car craze popularized by Nissan's own 300ZX, Acura's NSX, Toyota's Supra, Mitsubishi's 3000 GT, and more. Skylines were never sold in the US because they didn't meet emissions tests, nor were they crash tested or certified by the Department of Transportation with the proper reinforced bumpers needed. The third generation R32 would be produced from 1989 to 1994, the fourth gen R33 like you see here from 1995 to 1998, and the fifth gen R34 from 1999 to 2002. The R33 GTR was first introduced in 1994 as an evolution of the widely successful R32. While the core powertrain and multi-link suspension setup were similar, the R33 took what made the R32 great and improved upon it. Started with the engine, bore and stroke remained the same, but the R33 featured an improved intercooler, higher peak turbo boost, as well as revised engine management software with a new intake for improved torque and acceleration. The 5-speed manual featured stronger synchros for better durability, while the all-wheel drive system and standard limited slip differential were of similar design to the R32. The new active limited slip differential, available on newer V-Spec models, allowed for a locking rear differential if traction was lost by one of the wheels to send torque to the wheel with the most grip. The R33 GTR was also the first GTR to receive Brembo brakes as standard, while previously only optional with V-Spec or Nismo R32s. The rear suspension also gained additional bracing at the mount points which allowed for improved range of travel. The Skyline, like other select JDM manufacturers, also offered a full-time all-wheel drive system for GTS models, but the GTR featured its own unique setup known as Advanced Total Traction Engineering System for All Electronic Torque Split. Since that's a bit of a mouthful, I'll refer to it as a Tessa ETS for the remainder of the video. A Tessa ETS uses two G-Force sensors that are located under the center console. Together they measure both lateral and longitudinal forces up to 100 times per second, which are then sent to the car's electronic control unit. The ECU then distributes the proportion of available power to the front wheels via an electronically controlled torque split converter. It then distributes torque to the wheels with the most traction. While primarily rear wheel biased, it can be configured to send 100% of the power to the rear or an even 50-50 split between the front and rear. GTRs equipped with the V-Spec or Victory Spec configuration also had this system, but it was further tuned for faster reactivity thanks to recalibrated ECU settings which further improved oversteer. V-Spec cars also received a stiffer suspension as well as a 10mm drop in ride height than the standard GTR. What also made the GTR unique, like the 300ZX, was its innovative four-wheel steering system known as HiCast or High Capacity Actively Controlled Steering. Since that's also a bit of a mouthful, I'll refer to it as HiCast for the remainder of the video. It basically allows the rear wheels to steer counterphase or opposite the front wheels up to a certain amount of degree in either direction to help mitigate the vehicle's turn-in with sharp curves without relying so much on the driver's skill. In other words, it increases the ability to direct the vehicle more into the curve. When the rear wheels are returning in phase through a curve, a slip angle is developed as the rear wheels gain more traction, helping launch the car out of the apex. 
When HiCast was implemented in the R32 GTR, it worked through hydraulics that ran off the power steering pump and took input from speed sensors in order to determine how much the rear wheels would turn to complement the front. With the 94R33, a revised system known as Super HiCast would feature an electronic actuator mounted on the rear steering rack rather than hydraulics. It also improved handling by measuring front and rear yaw rates. The new setup helped decrease weight in addition to adding a dedicated computer control module that supplies inputs rather than the earlier speed sensors. As far as styling and construction, the R33 is slightly larger and heavier than the R32, but also boasts more low-end power to compensate. Dimensionally, the R33 is 5.2 inches longer with approximately 4 inches of increased wheelbase. It's also 1 inch wider and 0.7 inches taller, while weight is up 220 pounds compared to the R32. Those increased dimensions also lead to increased interior room and trunk space. The R33 also debuted a new multi-piece adjustable rear spoiler that you can adjust to four different angles and lead to four corresponding coefficient of drags ranging from 0.35 to 0.39. While the GTR does have similar styling cues as the standard Skylines, it does differ itself with unique front bumper and wide air inlets for the larger intercooler, unique side skirts and taller rear wing, while the Bali implements the use of aluminum for the hood and front fenders. The R33's fenders were actually widened to fit a set of wider wheels and tires for better traction. In 1996, the R33 Series 2 debuted and featured slightly reshaped body kits with sleeker headlamps and modified grille. It was at this point where dual airbags became standard as well as the additional option of the active limited slip differential as I touched on earlier. The R33 GTR originally came with 17 inch aluminum alloys wrapped in two 50-50 tires with four wheel ventilated Brembo disc brakes clamped down by four piston calipers in front and two piston calipers in the rear. This example we have here has been completely reworked and upgraded with gold painted 19 by 9.5 inch Volk Racing GTF wheels, wrapped in 285-30 Nitto Envo tires. Brakes have also been up to a complete, higher spec Brembo braking system with custom cobalt carbon brake pads and custom Teflon brake lines. The GTR also featured a complete multi-link suspension both front and rear that was stiffer overall for the V-Spec models, in addition to the revised all-wheel drive system as we touched on earlier. This one in particular has upgraded HKS Hypermax 3 coilovers, Nismo Z-Tune suspension leaks, drive shaft shop front axles, ATS Carbonetic 1.5 front differential, Nismo motor and transmission mounts, as well as a high cast lockout bar. The lockout bar is a common modification to disable the rear wheel steering, said to actually improve handling over the factory's original claims and quick high speed maneuvering. Overall length is 184.1 inches with a width of 70.1 inches and a height of 53.5 inches. Total curb weight depending on how equipped is between 33 and 3400 pounds. The R33 GTR features Nissan's RB26 twin turbocharged and intercooled 2.6 liter inline 6 cylinder engine. The RB26 has an iron block with aluminum heads, double overhead camshafts and 4 valves per cylinder with an 8.5 to 1 compression ratio. It's unique in the fact that it features six individual throttle bodies rather than a single unit, as well as the parallel configuration of the twin ceramic Garrett turbochargers. Organized in a way that the first turbo is powered by the first three cylinders, while the rear pairs with the rear three cylinders. There's also a limiter set by the wastegates to limit boost pressure to 10 pounds per square inch, while there is a temporary overboost function to bump it to 14 psi. This translates to a factory claimed 276 horsepower at 6800 rpm, and 271 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. It was commonly known that the RB26 actually produced between 300 and 325 horsepower. The underrated power was said to be in agreement between various JDM manufacturers to limit the horsepower that would be advertised to the public. Stock performance data included 0 to 60 miles an hour of 5 seconds, quarter mile time of 13.6 seconds at 102 miles an hour, and a top speed limited to 155 miles an hour. With overboost, times decreased to 4.7 seconds to 60 and the quarter mile time of 12.8 seconds. It was also clocked around the Nürburgring at 7 minutes 59 seconds. The design was originally to use a smaller displacement engine for Group A racing, but with the addition of the all-wheel drive system and the weight penalty it added, it led to the use of the larger displacement RB variant that would last through the R34 generation before the discontinuation in 2002. This R33 features an extensive list of modifications inside and out. 
For example, opening up the trunk lock and taking a close look at the back, you'll see a direct port progressive 200 shot nitrous system with two tanks located in the back, two batteries, extra bracing and electronics, as well as a full turbo back 4 inch GS Motorsport exhaust with Magnaflow race muffler. All in all, the car produces around 1200 horsepower and runs on pure ethanol. For a detailed list of the modifications, please see the list that I've included in the description box below. The interior of the GTR is pretty much similar to other Nissan products of the 1990s, but with a dose of extra sporty flavor. Build quality is good with soft padding across the touch points as well as cloth inserts across the doors. Panel fitment is also quite good with low, if any, gaps, especially for a car of this age, which helps making the interior feel a little bit more solid. Taking a closer look at the panel, you see the soft touch material across the armrest as well as the upper portion of the door. Lower storage down below helps aid in practicality, while all of your electric features are located on the door for the most part, including your power windows, power locks, while your power mirrors are located on the dash. For extra practicality, the vehicle also has power folding mirrors if you're in a tight parking space. Now as far as seating, like I briefly touched on earlier, the GTR came with upgraded race-inspired sport cloth bucket seats. With a built-in headrest and a port for racing harnesses, they definitely look the part, and with plenty of lateral grip up top and down below, they also hold you in place going around those tight curves. The middle portion is accent with color accent stitching. While the bolsters themselves are nice and firm, the overall seat features a reasonable amount of support. It's also fully manual as far as adjustment is concerned. To gain access to the rear seat, just pull up on the little lever there, and it's actually a little bit easier on the passenger side as it automatically slides the seat forward as well, I'll show that in just a little bit. The back seat is a traditional bench but kind of scooped out in the middle like little bucket seats and can comfortably fit two people. As far as the rest of the interior, it's definitely quite roomy. As you continue down below, you have a logo door entry guard, as well as logo Nismo floor mats with all weather protection. The steering wheel is manual tilting, and everything is nice and focused towards the driver in the very unique right hand drive configuration. All nicely finished off with a charcoal headliner. So let's go ahead and see what she sounds. GTR features an upgraded Pioneer aftermarket audio system with CD player located in the lower portion of the modified center stack. The overall design of the interior is nice and clean, simple, with easy access to all of your necessary controls. with 
follow the safety instructions in Japanese. As well as the standard manually dimming view mirror and your reading lamps up top. Your main illumination is up in the center of the headliner. Now without going too far in depth, this driver information setup right here shows all of the car's vital functions so it gives you a real-time instantaneous look at what everything's performing in the current moment. Things like your tachometer, what gear you're in, current speed, time, pressures, temperatures, you name it. As we continue down the center console, you have a digital clock there, your hazards like you saw earlier, as well as your rear defrost. Your simple to use electronic automatic climate control system is located at the very bottom. Got an easy to see digital display, your fan speed, changing the different zones, temperature, recycling, as well as front defrost. Your simple and clean center console with a little storage tray and a modest glove box. It's also padded. The steering wheel is also a simple clean design with a JDM instrumentation cluster. White face with all of your necessary gauges including your oil pressure, vehicle fuel, temperature, tachometer, spinometer front and center, and not to mention your turbo boost down below. Alrighty. Go ahead and shut her down. And we're gonna check out the rest of the vehicle. Passenger seat is also manually adjusting. Getting into the back seat on the passenger side is a little bit simpler than the driver's, just for the fact that you have this little switch here that if you push down, it folds the seat so you can slide it forward. You also have a locking glove box down below. The Nissan Skyline GTR, while immensely famous in international racing, unfortunately wasn't exposed to a large worldwide market compared to some of its other JDM competition. In fact, its most significant media presence to my knowledge in the United States was in the Fast and the Furious movie series, specifically the R34 driven by the late Paul Walker. With immense performance and modification capabilities with superior handling and traction, it's no wonder why the GTR became such a widely known icon. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 1997 Nissan Skyline GTR. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.